I'm Jonah Berger, and this is Great Question, where Wharton professors like me answer your burning questions. And today we're going to talk about the power of influence. So one question we got is, does having more followers or likes necessarily mean more influence? Someone can have a lot of likes or even a lot of followers, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're getting deep engagement with the content that they post. Someone who has a lot of followers, for example, may have been on the platform for a long time, and many of those people might be bots or maybe not even still on the site. What we care more about is are people engaging with the content? Are they sharing it? Are they commenting on it? Or even in some cases, are they liking it? Likes are a smaller measure of engagement, but they're better than nothing. Another great question is what are the common mistakes I see that brands make when attempting to change their customer's mind? And this is actually the subject of my most recent book, The Catalyst, which is all about changing minds. And I think the big problem brands make is pushing, right? Brands and individuals, when we have someone we want to change, whether that person is a peer, a colleague, a customer, a consumer, or maybe even a boss, too often we think pushing will work, right? Just give people more information, more facts, more figures, more reasons, they'll come around. But while pushing is great for chairs and other things in the physical world, sure enough, it gets them to go. When we push people, they often push back. They dig in their heels, they become less likely to do what we wanted them to do in the first place. And so rather than pushing, we need to identify the barriers to change and, and mitigate them. In the catalyst, I talk about five common barriers, reactance, endowment, distance, uncertainty, and corroborating evidence. Each of those five often get in the way of change, but by mitigating them, we can make change a lot more likely. Another question we got is about personal branding. Someone said, the idea of personal branding makes me flinch. In the social media age, is personal branding unavoidable? Well, let me start by saying personal branding also makes me flinch. I certainly don't enjoy updating my Twitter page or my LinkedIn bio, thinking about what I say will affect how other people see me. And it's sort of an icky task to do that I don't like either. But I think in today's digital age, some version of personal branding is unavoidable. People are going to want to look you up, whether they're looking to hire you or work with you or work with your company organization, they may look at your profile as a way to make a decision. And so making sure that profile at least represents how you want it to look is important. And if it feels icky, maybe have someone else do it for you. Sometimes one of our friends or our spouse is a much better advocate for us than we are. If you're a little bit more of an introvert or you don't like bragging, maybe have someone else who is better at those things write your profile. Make sure you're okay with it, but they may have an easier time than, than you actually will. Another great question we got is, what are my thoughts on influencer marketing and its effectiveness? And influencer marketing is obviously a hot topic these days. Brands are spending a good amount of money to get quote unquote influencers to engage and, and share their stuff, but is it actually worth it? And I would say in general, the quick answer is no. Most of this money is, is misspent. Brands are chasing people that have large audiences rather than a really demonstrating engagement. Uh, and it's, so it's not as effective as it might seem. That said, I think the deeper question is, what are we buying when we're buying influencers? Are we buying reach or are we buying impact? If the goal is just to reach more people and reach the right people, um, potentially a targeted segment that's hard to get otherwise, then influencers, if they're a cost-effective way, can be a great way to reach that segment. But if the notion is we're buying impact, no one's better than someone's best friend. Word of mouth is much more impactful than traditional advertising or influencer marketing in actually driving sales. Someone else asked, what's the best way to convince someone to try something new? And personally, I think the best way to get people to try something new is to stop trying to convince them in the first place, right? If something is good and you let them experience that good thing, they'll convince themselves. And so I often talk a lot when I work with consulting clients about how can we lower the barrier to trial? How can we make it easier for people to experience the value of what we're doing? Take Dropbox, for example. When they first launched, they gave away two gigabytes of storage for free. Don't trust us that the service is great. Check it out yourself. And if you like it, you'll be more willing to upgrade to a premium version. And so things like freemium, things like test drives, things like free samples, other ways to lower the barrier to trial can be a great way to get people to experience the value of something. And as a result, try something new. The easier it is to try, the more likely people are to buy. Thank you guys so much for submitting your questions. And to learn more, please check out my new bestseller, The Catalyst, How to Change Anyone's Mind.